Hey weavers, I'm here today to show you how to weave a structure called false or mock satin damask pickup. It's a four shaft weave and it weaves a reversible fabric. It can weave weft faced, which you see in this area and here, or it can weave warp faced, as you see in this area. I'm using a 12 dent reed with four ends in every other dent. So I have 24 ends per inch and each one of those groups of four threads is threaded uh, one, two, three, four, and having them in a single dent will help keep the pickup technique that I'm using straight and less confusing, so that's all good. Uh, what I'm using for my pickup design is a image that I have worked out on graph paper. This is a really fun thing to do. Anything that you can chart on graph paper like you would for a kind of cross stitch or for a needlepoint, you can weave this way. And what I've done is, first of all, I'm going to fold this so I can keep this area close to where I'm going to be doing the pickup. You'll also see that I've made some notes on this chart so that I know how many rows of squares there are in some areas and how many columns of squares there are uh, before and after some of the shapes. Each one of these squares represents this group, one of these groups of four threads, four warp threads, and four weft picks. So in the first part of this chart, you might be able to see, I hope, that there are four rows of squares and there are no pickup on, there are no pickup um, shapes on the, that uh, in that area so that's what's represented here I've gone ahead and woven those four um, four rows of squares so I'm going to start here and what I've done I used this highlighter tape this is something that I I bought on um, Amazon I think you can find it in office supply stores but it's really great for using any kind of a, a charted design or keeping your place in any kind of uh, sequence that you that you have to follow carefully. I folded the ends back on both ends of that and I'm going to put that right under the first line of pickup. Having the ends folded back means that it's easy to grab a hold of so I can pick it up and move it. I'm only marking it once on this end because each one of these shapes is the same and as soon as I figure out what's going on here I can just remember that as I move across the warp. Once I get up into another more complex part of the design, I may have four or five pieces of tape across there so that I can move it and keep a, a visual line of where I am in the design. The thing that I found works best for doing the pickup itself is size 13 piano wire. I tried some other things like a traditional pickup stick and I tried knitting needles and none of those worked as well as the piano wire does. The thing about that you need to know about piano wire is that it's when you cut the end of it, it's very, very sharp. So it's important to tape the ends or do something to protect yourself from that sharp end because it will cut you and it can also cut or snag the warp. So what I did initially was wind this with or tape this with some heavy black tape. It kind of started to wear and fray a little bit as I used it, so I've taped over it again with a piece of masking tape and tried to make that as smooth and as tight as possible. Then once I wound up to the top, I cut that just above that sharp end so I know that that end is not going to go through and poke me or get hung up in the warp. So I've got two pieces. Each one of these is two and a half feet long, so it's wider than the warp, as you can see here, which makes it easy to handle because that wire is going to go all the way across the warp. What I have written down here is that I have 11 squares before the first pickup square and then 16 in between each one of these shapes across the warp. So I'm going to first count over 11 uh, dents or 11 what represents 11 squares. I'm stepping on the first treadle which raises uh, shafts 2 and 3. If you think about each one of these four thread groups being threaded, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 and 4 are the outside threads and 2 and 3 are the inside. So the first pickup shed that I raise is on 2 and 3 so that would be the inside threads. So I'm going to count over 11 I'm not going to include my floating salvage in that count, so I can count four, 
and 4 is 8, and 3 more is 11. So 4, 4, 8, oops, 4, 4. Pick up the next one. Just going to slide the wire right under that. And then I'm going to go count over 16. I'm going to count in groups of 4. Pick up the next end, or the next group of 2 threads. There are only two ends coming out of each dent now, and you want to make sure that you get both, you pick up both ends that come out of that dent, and that you don't pick up one from one dent and one from another. That's why having these separated by an empty dent helps keep things straight. So, four. Now when I get to the other side, I want to make sure that I also have 11 remaining on this side. So I've got 4, 4, and 3. Okay, so I do. So that way I know everything is symmetrical. Now when I first got this wire, I, it came in a coil, and I thought that was going to be a problem because it wasn't straight, but actually that's turned out to be a benefit because what I need to do next is release the shafts, and I want to step on my first before I do that, I'm sorry, I want to push this wire back against the reed before I step on my first treadle to weave the cloth. So you can see that that holds these threads above the, above the wire. If I don't push it back and I lift, I open that shed, there's nothing, there are none of the pickup stitches back here and the shuttle will just miss that. So it's important that every time before I weave, a weft pick, I'm going to move that wire back against the reed. Then I can throw my shuttle and I'm going to just beat that wire against the fell of the cloth. Now I'm going to leave the wire in when I raise the first and the third and the fourth shafts. And when I do the pickup this time, I'm going to weave I'm sorry, I'm going to pick up the opposite two threads that I, as the, I did the first time. The first time I picked up two and three coming out of that dent, now I'm picking up one and four. So I don't need to count, I can just go across. Now I can see because that wire is in there to guide me and help me see exactly where I picked up threads the first time. So I'll put the second pickup wire where it needs to be. Then I release the tension on the shafts and let this take this first wire out of the shed. Now I want to move this back, push it against the reed, lift my second shed for the next weft pick, weave that one, and then on this, uh, on the for the third pick, it's going to be woven with that same wire in there. So I push that back, push it to the back, then lift what's uh, the shaft for my third pick, leave it, and now I'm going back to the shaft or the treadle that's lifting what I did the first time, it's lifting shafts two and three. So I'm going to go back and put that wire in, Let it relax, then I can pull, oops, hopefully I can pull that out. That's how that catches a little bit, I need to smooth that out so I can pull that out there, out of there more smoothly. Then again, I'm going to push that wire toward the back, and this will be my fourth pick on that pickup sequence. Feed it, then I can pull this wire out. And because the wire was in there for the last four picks, it doesn't beat real tightly against the fell. So I'm going to give that a good whack three times because I found that that 
seems to be what it needs in order for my PIX per inch or PPI to work out correctly. Now I'm ready for the second row of pickup, so I'm going to go back to my chart and I'm going to move this tape and put it over the row that I just did. Then I can see where I was and I can also see where I'm going. And so the next row shows me that I'm picking up that center or that first group of threads again as well as one on either side of that. Going back to what to picking up two and three, and this time I'll be picking up three groups of threads instead of one. This is obviously not a fast process, but I think it's really fun to watch the okay, I've got to watch the images emerge. Now I've got that wire in there where it needs to go. I'm going to weave my first pick of the next four. And then I'm going to put my second wire in, which I just dropped on the floor. So again, it's picking up two threads from the same dent that the others came out of, but th this is threads one and four out of those three dents. Let it relax. Take that wire out. Push it to the back. This is the second pick on the four in sequence. Push it to the back again. And I'm going to use the first wire again. Same groups of threads all the way across. So you'll see that for each four weft picks, you're going to be putting your pickup wires in three times. Let it relax. Pull it out. Fourth pick. Take that one out. Beat it three times. So you can see where that um, the shape is starting to emerge. If you make a mistake, first of all, don't worry about it. I made plenty of them, and especially when you're first learning to do this, it's very easy to get things confused or um, do something that is different than what you're supposed to do. But let me show you an easy way to take it out. Instead of trying to put the wire back in and back that out, which you would need to do if you were going to use your sh back your shuttle through there, I cut the thread and then I treadle whatever the last pick was. And you can see it's caught, it catches underneath the threads that were pickup threads, but you can kind of work it out over there. And then I use a, what size is that? Size six crochet hook or anything else that you have that's fine. Like that will work. And I just pull that out. And back that up as far as, as you need to. And then you can just you can start weaving again. Um, as I said, it's not a fast technique, but I think it's really interesting that you can weave an image on four shafts and it's fun to watch the image emerge. And if you just know that it's not fast and that you need to take your time pay very careful attention to detail. I think you'll have a lot of fun doing it. So I hope you give it a try and I hope you'll have fun. Thanks for watching.